Looking back on our illustrious past, even the last 100 years, humans have developed technology that even our grandparents found within the fathoms of their imagination. While we can only imagine what the ancient Romans, Greeks, and Aztecs, for example, would think about today's discoveries, they were some of the first great innovators. Ancient civilizations didn't sit around and wait for greatness, they created it. From aqueducts to pyramids to underground cities, 20 most mysterious ancient structures in the world. Pyramid of Djoser Constructed about 4,700 years ago, this was the first pyramid the Egyptians ever built. The ancient pharaoh that gave the pyramid its name, Djoser, ruled during Egypt's third dynasty. It started off as a mastaba tomb, a flat roof structure with sloping sides, and through a series of expansions evolved into a 197 foot high pyramid with six layers, one built on top of the other, using 11.6 million cubic feet of stone and clay. The tunnels beneath the pyramid form a labyrinth about 3.5 miles long. The pyramid was covered with limestone, most of which is gone today. In earlier times, pharaohs were buried in smaller tombs, which robbers could reach by digging in from the top. The step pyramid of Djoser would have made it almost impossible for a robber to reach the burial chamber by digging in from the top. Protection from grave robbers may be a reason why the ancient Egyptians built the step pyramid. While the step pyramid may have offered enhanced protection, people eventually broke into it and today most of the burial goods including the mummy of Djoser are long gone. Not every mummy has been looted from the tomb, however. Recent archaeological work revealed three more mummies that were buried inside. What will they find next? We just have to wait and see. And now it's time for our open discussion. Nobody knows who built these structures, but it's been suggested that aliens are responsible for some of our planet's most ancient monuments. And since these statues are giving us serious alien vibes, maybe, just maybe, that theory could be true. Planet Earth is home to some mind-boggling relics from eras long past. Constructions that seem to defy the technological capabilities of their time, either because they're too big, too heavy, or too complex. As such, many people have theorized that the ancient builders of Egyptian pyramids, for example, were following an extraterrestrial instruction manual. Not only that, perhaps the hands that crafted these sites weren't really of this world. It's fun to think about whether aliens have visited Earth. After all, humans are on the threshold of expanding our reach in space, and places like Mars are in our sight. But the truth is, there's no evidence suggesting that aliens have ever been here. And suggesting such a radical explanation for some of the most monumental of human achievements means skipping over the ways in which prehistoric civilizations created some of the largest and most iconic constructions on Earth. But that doesn't exactly explain why nobody knows who built these statues. Any ideas? Comment below with the hashtag OpenDiscussion and let us know what you think. Persepolis The glory and magnificence of the remains of these giant structures in Persepolis have turned into one of the most famous historical attractions in Iran. It is situated on the high Iranian plateau, with its back sheltered from the north winds by the Great Mountain of Mercy. The plain is green and fertile, watered by canals and covered in fields. It's cold in winter and rather hot in summer, but gorgeous in the spring, so that's the best time to visit. Located about 37 miles northeast of Shiraz, the complex is raised high on a walled platform, with five palaces or halls of varying size and grand entrances. Persepolis was the capital of the king, Darius, who founded the city in 518 BC, although a great amount of the city has been ruined by the fire set by Alexander the Great. The function of Persepolis remains unclear. It was not one of the largest cities in Persia, let alone the rest of the empire, but appears to have been a grand ceremonial complex that was only occupied seasonally. It's still not entirely clear where the king's private quarters actually were, until recently, most archaeologists held that it was primarily used for celebrating the Persian New Year, held at the spring equinox, which is still an important annual festivity in modern Iran. Skara Bray Uncovered by a storm in the 1800s, this site presents a remarkable picture of life around 5,000 years ago. Located on an archipelago of Scotland in the UK, they found the Neolithic village of Skara Bray. 
The site was occupied from roughly 3180 BC to about 2500 BC and is Europe's most complete Neolithic village. In the winter of 1850, a severe storm hit Scotland, causing widespread damage and over 200 deaths. In the Bay of Scale, the storm stripped the earth from a large irregular knoll, now known as the Scara Bray. When the storm cleared, local villagers found the outline of a village. It consisted of 10 clustered houses made of flagstones and earth dams that provided support for the walls. The houses included stone hearths, beds, and cupboards, a primitive sewer system with primitive toilets and drains in each house, including water used to flush waste into a drain and out to the ocean. The site remained undisturbed until 1913 when the site was plundered by a party with shovels who took away an unknown quantity of artifacts. In 1924, another storm swept away part of one of the houses and it was determined the site should be properly investigated. Older than Stonehenge and the Great Pyramids of Giza, it had been called the Scottish Pompeii because of its excellent preservation. Non Madol Micronesia is a subregion of Oceania, consisting of about 2,000 small islands in the northwestern Pacific Ocean. And that's where these ruins of a once great city of man-made stone islands, the remains of megalithic architecture on an unparalleled scale. The construction of artificial islets started probably in the 8th and 9th century AD. However, the megalithic structures were built in the period from the 12th to 13th century constructed on a series of artificial islets in the shallow water. Nan Madol seems to have housed the ruling elite, and it was a political and ceremonial seat of power. Most of the islets served as residential areas, however some of them served special purposes, such as food preparation, coconut oil production, or canoe construction. The centerpiece of the whole complex is the royal mortuary, with its 25-foot high walls surrounding the central tomb enclosure. Nan Madol is the biggest center of the culture which left numerous other structures scattered on neighboring shores. According to local legend, the stones used in the construction of Nan Madol have been flown to the location by means of black magic. Archaeologists have located several quarry sites on the main island. However, the exact method of transportation and construction material is still not determined. Gosek Circle you have to see this Neolithic structure in Germany. Its construction is dated to approximately 4900 BC and appears to have remained in use for about 2000 years. Thus, it may be the oldest and best known of the circular enclosures associated with the Central European Neolithic. The circle consists of a concentric ditch 246 feet across and two palisade rings containing entrances in places aligned with sunrise and sunset on the winter solstice days and smaller entrances aligned with summer solstice. The site has been described as one of the oldest solar observatories in the world, but sunrise and sunset during winter and summer solstices are the only evident astronomical alignments emphasized in the remains of the structure. Excavators also found the remains of what may have been ritual fires, animal and human bones, and a headless skeleton near the southeastern gate, which could be interpreted as traces of human sacrifice or a specific burial ritual. However, why the site was abandoned is unknown. Later villagers built a defensive moat following the ditches of the old enclosure. Currently, the site is presented officially by the state archaeologists and the local association that looks after it. It was opened for visitors in 2005. Velse Church Before Columbus had even thought about finding a new shorter route to India, settlers had established communities in Greenland, a large island found in the North Atlantic. Here you will encounter a mixture of history as well as a view of nature rarely seen. This area contains the best preserved and largest site of Norse ruins, notably the Velse Church, one of the first Christian churches on the continent of North America. Vikings in Greenland built the church to serve the Christians living in the area. The religion arrived in Greenland around the year 1000, and churches began to be built in the country. It's thought that the Valsi church was built in the early 14th century, but archaeological finds hint that this is not the first church on the site. The best preserved Norse ruins in Greenland, the church was also the location of the last written record of a wedding in September 1408. When it was at its peak, the Valsi Parish area included the church as well as 14 other buildings. Archaeologists believe that these may have included storehouses, residential homes, or the priest's home. Other ruins may be those of a banquet hall and a residential complex. 
Today, the site is part of a sheep farm, but the legacy remains a monument to Greenland's Viking history. Cappadocia Underground City Cappadocia is known for its rocky landscape and impressive fairy chimneys. But what some people don't know is that it's also home to over 200 underground cities. However, only two of them are open to the public, one of which is one of the oldest underground cities. The Gaimakli Underground City It's a narrow underground maze of passageways and ancient homes and settlements that once housed over 3,500 people. From as far back as the 7th and 8th centuries BC, caves may have first been built in the soft volcanic rock by Indo-European people, when their ancient language died out in Roman times replaced with Greek, the inhabitants expanded their caverns. Kaimakli is undoubtedly one of the biggest underground settlements in the area, even if only four floors have been exposed and the entire city is not yet fully revealed. It's acknowledged as being the largest explored underground city in Cappadocia. The fact that there were so many storage rooms suggests that there were many people who were living there. The houses in the village today are constructed around nearly 100 tunnels of the underground city. The tunnels are still used as storage areas, stables, and cellars. It's one of the most unique places to visit here, and it's a must-see attraction. Hegra Before 2020, when authorities formally opened Hegra for tourism, people could visit the ancient site of Saudi Arabia, but may not have had quite the same experience you can today. The opening of Hegra has turned the ancient site into a living museum. The new access to the architectural marvel is already opening people's eyes to the deep historical roots of Arabia. Covering 128 acres, Hegra features tombs and countless rock formations. A majority of the remains date from the 1st century AD. The site constitutes the kingdom's southernmost and second largest city after Petra, now in Jordan, its capital city. Records place the settlement of the area by the Thamudi people. According to the Islamic text, they were punished by God for their sins, struck by an earthquake and lightning blasts. Thus, the site has earned a reputation as a cursed place, an image that the national government is attempting to overcome as it seeks to develop the area for its potential for tourism. Despite this, in 2008, it became Saudi Arabia's first World Heritage Site. It was chosen for its well-preserved remains from late antiquity, especially the 131 monumental rock-cut tombs, with their elaborately ornamented facades. It really is a Saudi sight to behold. Newgrange Newgrange is a prehistoric monument in Ireland located on a rise overlooking the river Boyne. It's an exceptionally grand passage tomb built around 3200 BC, making it older than Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids. Now that's clout! Built by Stonehenge farmers, the mound is 279 feet in diameter and 43 feet high, with an area of about one acre. The mound has a retaining wall at the front made mostly of white quartz cobblestones and is ringed by engraved curbstones. Many of the larger stones of New Grange are covered in megalithic art too. There is no agreement about its purpose, but it's believed it had religious significance. It's aligned so that the rising sun on the winter solstice shines through a hole above the entrance and floods the inner chamber. Inside, there's an inner stone passageway and chamber, burnt and unburnt human bones and possible grave goods or votive offerings were found in this chamber as well. Its initial period of use lasted about 1,000 years. However, it gradually became a ruin, although the area continued to be a site of ritual activity. It's featured in Irish mythology and folklore, in which it is said to be a dwelling of the deities. Today, New Grange is a popular tourist site and is regarded as the Great National Monument of Ireland, one of the most important megalithic structures in Europe. Machu Picchu Most modern archaeologists and historians agree that the iconic Machu Picchu dates back to approximately the 15th century. The construction began around the time the Inca people began to expand their territory across the continent likely built as a refuge for elite members of the aristocracy. The fortress was constructed on the eastern slopes of the Vilcanota mountain range, surrounded by steep cliffs and away from the sight of strangers in a tangled forest. The citadel of Machu Picchu had the quality of having only one narrow entrance so that only a few warriors were needed for defense in the event of a surprise attack. Occupied by at least three generations of Incas, it was abandoned for sudden and mysterious reasons. The strongest hypothesis explains that since lower class citizens didn't know about the existence of Machu Picchu, and routes leading there were prohibited for anyone who was not part of the small circle of the elite. 
the knowledge of the Grand City simply faded from historical memory. July 24, 1911 is known as the rediscovery date of the famous architectural treasure that had been hidden for more than four centuries. Machu Picchu was designated one of the seven new wonders of the world, and is Peru's most visited attraction and South America's most famous ruin, Baalbek, Lebanon. Situated atop a high point in a fertile valley in Lebanon, these ruins are one of the most extraordinary and enigmatic holy places of ancient times. Approximately 53 miles northeast of the city of Beirut stands the temple complex of Baalbek, the largest stone block construction found in the entire world. The origin and development of Baalbek may be considered from two quite different paradigms of prehistory. One, the conventional approach that views civilization as having only begun in Middle Neolithic times, and the alternative approach which suggests the development of cultures existed in what is archaeologically known as the Paleolithic period. The late 11th century BC witnessed the arrival of an army on the Mediterranean coast, but because Baalbek is not mentioned alongside the names of other cities, it's been assumed that it was an obscure religious center with no political or trading importance. Furthermore, during the period of Roman rule, this place was known as the City of the Sun and housed one of the largest and grandest sanctuaries in the empire. However, much of the ancient settlement had been destroyed by an earthquake, but between 1898 and 1903, an expedition excavated the two huge temples and began to reconstruct the ruins. Palenque, Mexico Anciently known in the Itza language as La Camha, which stands for Big Waters, Palenque was a Maya city-state in southern Mexico that perished in the 8th century. After its decline, it was overgrown by the jungle of cedar and mahogany, but has since been excavated and restored. It contains some of the finest architecture, sculpture, and carvings that the Mayas produced. Much of the history has been reconstructed from reading the hieroglyphic inscriptions on the many monuments. Historians now have a long sequence of the ruling dynasty of Palenque in the 5th century, and extensive knowledge of the city-state's rivalry with other states. By 2005, the discovered area covered up to one square mile, but it's estimated that less than 10% of the total area of the city is explored, leaving more than a thousand structures still covered by jungle. One of the largest and best preserved structures, the Temple of the Inscriptions, is noted for its hieroglyphic markings. A prime example of a Mayan sanctuary of the classical period, Palenque was at its height between AD 500 and 700, when its influence extended throughout the region. The elegance and craftsmanship of the buildings, as well as the sculpted reliefs with their Mayan mythological themes, attest to the creative genius of this civilization. A Step Well of Chandbauri The Chandbauri Step Well extends approximately 100 feet into the ground, making it one of the deepest and largest step wells in India. 3,500 narrow steps over 13 stories. Based on similarities in style and carvings with the terrace temples elsewhere, the Bowery can be dated to the 8th and 9th century. Chan Bowery is one of the few step walls that has two classical periods of water building in a single setting. Many of these step wells, including this one, served multiple purposes alongside drawing water and playing a significant role in religious or ceremonial activities. Pilgrims are said to have found comfort in quenching their thirst and finding a resting spot on the steps after their long travels. An upper palace building was added to the site, which is viewed from the tabulated arches used by the rulers at the time. Adjoining the Bowery is the architecturally splendid and sculpturally beautiful Arshat Mata Temple, which was built around the same time, but was eventually destroyed. Many of its pillars, columns, and statues now lie scattered. Remains of old sculptures and carvings were suggested to be in the temple or in the various rooms. Unlike anything we've seen before, the nearby temple was a pilgrimage site and formed a complex together alongside the well. Mesa Verde Mesa Verde National Park, a national park in southwestern Colorado, was established in 1906 to preserve notable prehistoric cliff dwellings. It was designated a World Heritage Site in 1978, occupying a high tableland area of 81 square miles. It contains hundreds of ruins. The most striking are multi-storied apartments built under overhanging cliffs. Imagine living in a home built into the side of a cliff. The ancestral Puebloan peoples did just that in some of the most remarkable structures still in existence today. 
They built more than 600 structures into the cliff faces of the Four Corners region of the United States. The dwellings are located in what is today southwestern Colorado in the national park known as Mesa Verde. The most famous residential sites date to the 12th and 13th centuries. The structures made of stone, mortar, and plaster remain the most intact. We often see traces of the people who constructed these buildings, such as hand or fingerprints, on many of the mortar and plaster walls. The ancestral Puebloans accessed these dwellings with retractable ladders, and you can still visit some of the sites in the same way today. People come from around the world to marvel at the natural beauty, as well as the remains making it a popular tourist destination. Moai In a dry lake bed archaeologists on Rapa Nui in eastern Polynesia, also known as Easter Island, have unearthed a previously unknown statue. The new find is one of the Moai, the famous stone figures located around the island, representing the islanders' deified ancestors. The new Moai is smaller than the nearly 1,000 other statues on the island, which can measure up to 33 feet tall and can weigh up to 80 tons. Nearly half are still at the main quarry, but hundreds were transported from there and set on stone platforms around the island's perimeter. The production and transportation of more than 900 statues are considered a remarkable creative and physical feat. The Rapa Nui people created the Moai out of a solidified volcanic ash, between roughly 1300 and 1600 CE. Many of the statues are situated on stone platforms known as Ahu. They face inward, away from the surrounding sea. The most visible parts of the monoliths are their heads, as their torsos are buried underground. Almost all of them have overly large heads, three-eighths the size of the whole statue. Some have red stones atop their heads, which are believed to represent a hat or top knot of hair. Researchers hope to find other ancient artifacts, including additional moe and tools. Plus, they also plan to perform radiocarbon dating to determine the moe's age. Megalithic Temples of Malta The megalithic temples of Malta rank among the oldest freestanding buildings in the world. Construction of these temples started in 3500 BCE, an impressive architectural feat for their time. Archaeologists believe that these complexes are the result of local innovations in a process of cultural evolution, particularly given that the builders had limited access to materials and did not have metal tools at their disposal. Generally, the architectural structure of these megalithic temples was that of an oval forecourt, which led onto a corridor made up of two stone slabs supporting a third on top. This corridor then led onto an open space built off the sides. The number of them varied. If there were many, a second passage was built to accommodate them. Discoveries of altars and animal remains suggested that the site was used for rituals, likely involving animal sacrifices. Other impressive artifacts include a fragment of a beautiful bull with a repeated pattern of birds, incised into it, and jewelry in the form of beads, pendants, and buttons made of stone, bone, and seashells. Though we do not know much about how these people lived before their disappearance in 2500 BCE, the temples they left behind can tell us a lot about the progression of their art style and even start to give us a picture of their religious practices. Pyramids of Meroe In Egypt, the most visible remains at Meroe are its pyramids, which contain the tombs of more than 40 kings, queens, and other important individuals. While these royal tombs were all plundered in ancient times, frescoes preserved in the tomb show that the rulers were either burned, mummified or not, and then covered with jewelry and laid in wooden cases. Some of the tombs of both royal and wealthy individuals also contained the skeletal remains of other humans as well as animals. These associated burial remains indicate a belief similar to that in dynastic Egypt that the deceased would need and enjoy the same things in the afterlife as they had while living. Additional damage was done to the pyramids by the 19th century explorer who demolished the tops of more than 40 pyramids in the search for treasures. They found gold in only one pyramid, but revealed that some of the larger tombs still contain remains of weapons, wooden furniture, pottery, and stained glass, and silver and bronze vessels, many of these being of Egyptian, Greek, and Roman origin. Today, Meroe is the largest archaeological site in Sudan. Situated about half a mile from the Nile, the remains of more than 200 uniquely Nubian pyramids can be found in the Sudanese desert. Tower of Winds, Athens The Tower of Winds is an octagonal marble clock tower in Athens, Greece. It's considered the world's first meteorological station. 
The structure features a combination of sundials, a water clock, and a wind vane. It was designed around 50 BC, but according to the other sources, it might have been constructed in the 2nd century BC. Experts performed restoration work cleaning and conserving the structure. Between 2014 and 2016, it's 39 feet tall and has a diameter of about 26 feet. The octagonal structure was made almost entirely out of pentelic marble, the same kind that was used for the Parthenon, which is a rare find in any structures other than temples. Built to measure time, each of its eight side faces a point on the compass and features a frieze depicting each of the eight ancient Greek wind gods, giving the tower its name. In early Christian times, the structure was converted to a church. Afterward, the building deteriorated until a restoration project between 1837 and 1845, when it was discovered that half of the structure became covered with the earth and debris that had accumulated over the centuries and half was underground. Modern restorations have salvaged the ancient scientific structure, and today it's one of the most significant landmarks in Greece. Lashan Giant Buddha The Lashan Giant Buddha, a 233-foot tall stone structure, was built between 713 and 803 during the Tang Dynasty. It's carved out of a cliff face of red bed sandstone that lies at the confluence of the Min River and the Daodu River in the southern part of Sichuan Province in China near the city of Lashan. It is the largest and tallest stone Buddha statue in the world, and it's by far the tallest pre-modern statue in the world. Construction started in 723 AD, led by a Chinese Buddhist monk who believed that Buddha would calm the turbulent waters that constantly plague the shipping vessels traveling down the river. After his death, however, the construction was delayed due to insufficient funding. About 70 years later, the construction was finally completed by the monk's disciples. A sophisticated drainage system was incorporated into the Lashan Giant Buddha when it was built. It is still in working order. It includes drainage pipes carved into various places on the body to carry away the water after the rain so as to reduce weathering. Apparently, the massive construction resulted in so much stone being removed from the cliff face and deposited into the river below that the currents were indeed altered by the statue making the water safe for passing ships. Aqueduct of Segovia Check out this Roman aqueduct in Spain, built to channel water from springs in the mountains 11 miles away to the city's fountains, public baths, and private houses. It was even in use until the 1970s. Its elevated section with its complete arcade of 167 arches is one of the best preserved Roman aqueduct bridges. It was built during the second half of the first century AD under the rule of the Roman Empire and supplied water from the Frio River. Along the rolling landscape, the aqueduct adjusts to the contours of the valley, hills, and city. The pillars and arches of its tall two-story arcades are made of solid blocks of stone that fit closely together with little to no mortar. However, damaging reconstruction occurred in the 15th and 16th centuries, and not until the 1970s and 1990s was there urgent conservation intervention. The aqueduct was inscribed on the World Heritage List in 1985 and stands prominently in the urban landscape of Segovia. The aqueduct of Segovia remains one of the most intact Roman aqueducts in Europe. It still conveys its original character and remains a prominent and evocative feature of the national landscape. It represents both the expansion of the Roman Empire and the attention to aesthetics and functionality that is so strongly associated with the engineering prowess of the Roman world. It's astounding how so many of these ancient structures endure to this day. But then again, some of the classic ancient building techniques rival even our most modern capabilities. And even the experts haven't quite got it figured out how these ancient civilizations did it. Which one of these amazing monuments was your favorite? You can let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more content.